All righty, we're back. Hi, everybody. We're here for the final hour of trading today, Monday, December the 19th. Here we go, the final hour. Um, Since uh, this morning when we were here, we're here every morning at 8.30 a.m. until about 9.30, 10 o'clock, we have uh, seen a backing off of the markets. Uh, the Dow Jones is now down 321 points. And, um, you know, we're right near the low of the day. I mean, here's the chart. I mean, it's just, you know, this is this morning. And uh, there you go. Down we are. Um, is it a catastrophic sell-off? No, it's just under 1%. But it is a continual slow bleed that we've now entered into this market. We are entering a slow bleeding away of equity values. And it's beginning to show up in certain stocks more than in other stocks. That is definitely going on. We could have reversals, we could have up days, but for the last now two weeks, the markets are lower and this is our third or fourth, fifth session in a row, I guess. But we'll have a bit of a pullback. Um, 51 point drop over at the S&P, which is worse than the Dow. And then on NASDAQ, we're worse than all the markets. We're off 188 points over there on the NASDAQ exchange. 1.76% where the Dow's down 1%. So the NASDAQ is leading the markets lower. Um, the oil market uh, is weakening as the afternoon wears on. We're only up 96 cents a barrel in West Texas. So there's uh, definite um, um, you know, adjustments going on here. On the uh, GameStop front, uh, as my title suggests, the stock is under $20. 1994 is where GameStop is trading at right now. Um, we broke the $20 barrier around 11.30 today. <clears throat> now, I was off the air about um, 10.30, something like that. <laughs> so an hour after I said, I'll see you later, uh, down went the GameStop shares. <clears throat> and they hit 1959 as their low trade of the day today. We've had 3 million shares trade all day today. 750,000 if you go back before the split to give you an idea just how quiet things are. Even at these low prices, we're not getting a, a, a massive lift in value. Uh, not a massive lift in volume to run it or or hold it or support it. So we're going to see how this uh, plays itself out. Everyone is watching Christmas sales very closely. People are wondering how are um, numbers going at cash registers uh, for retailers. Obviously for GameStop stores, this is extremely important this week uh, uh, as they try to close out their Christmas sales uh, numbers. Uh, we shall see. Moderna is down $5.10. I don't know if you've noticed that. But the Moderna has now come back down to 188 a share after topping out last week. I think we saw like $220 for a moment uh, at one point last week on Moderna. Now 188. Um, ATIP is still up 1.3 cents on the day today in a sea of red. ATIP 1.3 cents higher on 322,000 volume sitting at 31.8 cents a share. How about that? Low of 31, high of 35.8, opened at 35, and here we are at 31.8, still holding a slight little gain. Tesla, 149.81. I was asking you, wondering with you this morning, is it possible that Tesla might dip below 150 today? And I'm wondering if it closes below 150 today, will that initiate a margin call back to Elon Musk for some more cash. Will he have to sell more Tesla shares from his stash of stock to raise cash to appease his bankers? I don't know. 149.96 is where the stock is. This is far too close to 150 to tell you with any certainty that the shares will close under 150 today. This this doesn't require much of anything to run up over to 150.51. So we'll watch this as the hour goes by. We still have 56 minutes to watch that. So far, 443 and a half down 20 cents. Uh, these are definitely low prices here. The low of all time for SoFi, 424, but that wasn't set today. 442, right about where we are right now is today's low. And 20 million volume today is not a heavy panic fill, get me out of the stock sell-off. 
it's a quiet day and it's just drifting lower and no one seems to care and i guess there's the there it is uh if no one seems to care there isn't going to be a massive you know wave of buying to come in here and without a massive wave of buying the stock is sitting here and you ask for yourself wow this company is so close to starting to make a profit no one seems to care at the moment must be other things going on and maybe that's what it really is it's not personal it's nothing to do with the personalities over at sofi it's just that the market is getting hammered from various sides at the same time and those who are potential sofi investors right now are dealing with all kinds of margin calls and all kinds of other issues from all kinds of other stocks and they're just not going to get around to looking at sofi right now because they got a few other things on their plate that could be it could be that simple an explanation uh apple down 265 speaking of problems we're at 131.86 now we're going for 130 into the 120s this is a problem um hpq down 42 cents 26.30 Amazon down 326 to 8460. That's a problem. Uh, Home Depot down six dollars seventy-seven cents at three hundred sixteen bucks. Um, Cisco down sixty-four cents to forty-seven seventeen. <clears throat> Netflix now two eighty-eight um, down two sixty-nine today. Pfizer off forty-two cents at fifty ninety-eight. IBM one thirty-seven thirty-five down two eighty-one. Uh, Microsoft continuing to drop off. 239.17 down 549. Um, let's just take a look at this uh, little little chart here. See if I can see anything that's of any interest to us. I mean, this is the year. This is the the last 52 weeks of uh, Microsoft. We were up here. Uh, that that is 345 dollars over there. I don't know if you can see that. 340. You see that way over there? Way see that there? That says 345. Okay, 312, 278, 245. See this stock here? Eee! And it's had these dips, you know, little bumps back. But down here, we're not getting any serious bounce back at the end of this year. Not like we got a bounce back in August. We're not getting that at all. So there's the problem with Microsoft and probably a bunch of other stocks. We're running into this kind of a thing. Um, let me take a look here. Yeah, look, look at this is one year for Apple. Okay, this is one year. Uh, 183 back here. That was a year ago. See? The highs of the year last year, November. And then look at that. We hung around for a while. And then, whoops, that was June, July. The August bump and nothing back since we can't get it back that is a capitulation that is that is issues that is uh, downward pressure on st on the stock we got a lot to watch here and we'll just keep an eye on it if you're an option writer hey worry not uh you're an option writer keep bringing in cash against your shares offer contracts just outside the money a couple of bucks above the price of the stock right now offered for sale for a month or two taking fat juicy premiums cash 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 into your account and either enjoy the shrinkage that time will give you as they get destroyed by losing their time value and or on days like today take advantage of a dip move a downward move on your stock that drops your contracts faster than you would normally drop off and you might uh, buy them back and write additional contracts instead might be the same strike price that you have but for a month further out it might be a lower strike price for the same month you just bought your calls back for or a further time depending what your account situation looks like how much cash you can get and keep in mind too if you're sitting there and you're saying to yourself you know this GameStop thing uh, man oh man this GameStop's getting kind of fun uh, we're sitting here at 1994 a share right now and uh, I've been writing contracts here I wrote 30s and I bought them back and I wrote 28s stock went down I bought those back I wrote 27s the stock went down I bought those back and bought 25s I'm still doing it. uh some of you now could be in a position where in the not too distant future you might be looking at a cash balance in your account and the ability to buy back some calls for very little money that you wrote just the last week or two and you might be able to write something like a March uh, 
twenty-one dollar contract for three seventy-five. Well, if you can write ten of those and bring in thirty-seven hundred and fifty buckaroos, um, there's thirty-seven hundred fifty dollars coming in your front door. Um, it's possible that you might turn around and try to buy up three deep in the money calls on GameStop, and uh, you'll go shopping and. You'll check out the fact that the January 2025 contracts, the $10 contract, they're like 1165 bid to 1235. You might put an 1105 bid in there or a 1095 bid and just leave it as an open buy all day long. Try to buy three more of those calls. And if they come down to you to that level, you'll say, thank you, sir. I will take another. I'll take those three. You'll immediately turn around and write three more contracts. You're going to use premiums that you're bringing in to buy more deep in the money calls to write more contracts for more premium. That is the name of the game. In theory, if you had enough cash handy to buy four deep in the money calls at around $11 each, and then you wrote four more calls, one on each one, and brought in another twelve, sixteen hundred dollars $1,600, guess what? You have another mo enough money to buy another deep in the money call. And you are assuming an arsenal of deep in the money calls that you're now going to utilize going forward as your income generating machine. This is going to be your money generator, cash generator into your pocket. Obviously, the more calls you can write, the more income you're going to bring in. And this is why you should be motivated to really take a look at writing calls that are further down in time to bring in the biggest cash hit you can and let the gamblers on the floor of the casino that are buying your calls from you, let them fund your acquisition of additional deep in the money calls. And as I said before, if you can go from 20 to 24 for additional calls, that's a 20% pay raise every time you write contracts. You can go from 10 to 12, that's a 20% pay raise every time you write calls. Two more calls being written at four bucks each, $800. No employer, not a single employer out there that you guys work for right now. I don't think any of your employers are offering you anywhere near a 10% pay raise for the next year. Um, I'm talking about getting a 20% pay raise immediately from your option accounts. Um, and maybe two or three months from now, you're going to do another rollover and add another three, four, five contracts to your, your account. There's another 15, 20% pay raise. In effect, 2023 is going to become a huge year for you. I'm excited for you guys. Welcome to the show. Glad you're here. Nice to have you around. Uncle Bruce Bryan is saying, I have, uh, <clears throat> I have April 21st, <clears throat> 2023, 2750 calls. Strike. I sold it for $7.10. I sold this $27.50 for $7.10. <laughs> I love it. <coughs> it's now a $2.40. Mm. I was thinking about buying it back, uh, but I figure we have about a two weeks of time depreciation with the holidays. What do you think I should do with this thing? Uh, yes, what, what to do with a $27.50 call option that you're ahead on now, what's it like, 470-ish four, four a, a contract? 470 bucks a contract, isn't that beautiful? That's a good thing. Um, the only thing I can kind of come up with uh, for you is the possibility that because the shares are down 750 from your strike price, yeah, I mean, they're way out of the money, you might have an opportunity to uh, make a move here where you might be able to bring your contract in a bit. In other words, you, you buy this one back, this April back, and now you might write a February or a March contract instead at a lower strike price, um, which will give you 30 to 60 days of time to you. You're shortening the amount of time that the option players can play. Um, That might be really interesting. Let me take a look at something here. I'm kind of curious. So you're, you're talking about April. So you got April's right now. Uh, April 21's 27.50. So those right now, I'm showing on my antiquated system, 230 to 262. So 240 is, is in that ballpark for sure. So <clears throat> what could you write 
instead at around 250 or more, you know, to replace these. Um, well, you know, you could take a look at, for an example, um, the 2250s for uh, February the 17th, two months closer in time. They're going for, at the moment, uh, two, uh, 234 to 256 in that range. So, I mean, if you could sell them for 254, you know, stink offer, offer them off at 254 and buy your existing calls back for this 210, 220, 230 range, you'll make a little, little bit of money, but you'll, you'll bring your, 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 your strike price closer to the market, but you'll also come in in time a lot. That means that this contract depreciates quickly here from this 250 range to nothing. It is an out of the money contract at the moment. This is interesting. Um, that's a 2250. Uh, I like that. I mean, that's 250 out of the money um, for, for Feb. Not a bad idea. If you're going to go to, uh, let me just take a look at January. Even I'm, I'm curious about what's January look like. Is there anything here? Nah, no, there's nothing here. They, they've got destroyed. Uh, the, these premiums have been destroyed in January. Okay, that's that's okay. That's why I have so many happy viewers here. Uh, let's go to March now because that's one month closer in for you. Uh, I'm wondering if you can not only make a move closer but bring in more money, and here you go. If you're going to write a $22 contract for March, one month closer in, $22 strike price, you can bring in about three thirty-five, dollars maybe. That would bring you over a dollar uh, in premium per contract, hundred bucks a contract. More to you, a month shorter in time, <clears throat> and sitting on a twenty-two. That's that's an idea. Um, for the same amount of money, you can write a twenty-five. You can probably get two forty-five for a twenty-five for March, and still come in a month and not pay or get any more. It'll be it'll be a break even, almost uh, very close to a break even. That might be something. If you do go, however, into a uh, lower priced call like this uh, like even a 21 for march you could get maybe 370 for those you'll add almost um, what a dollar 30 maybe a dollar 40 more now if you had enough of these i don't know how many you have um uh i don't know how many of these calls you have but if you had 10 of them you'd bring in enough money to buy another deep in the money call and you just roll into another one of those Anyway, Brian, you've got some choices. You don't have to do anything if you don't want to, but I can see you moving in on time. I can see you squeezing the time component, which really turns me on. You can go down to February. That would be really smart. Uh, that would be really good. All right. Uh, JR, I'm hitting these thumbs up button today with both of my devices. I appreciate that, sir. <clears throat> Fantastic. Uh, let's see. Uh, what else is going on here? Uh, uh Jared Krishner at Twitter. <laughs> that's that's funny. <laughs> uh let's see. Uh, 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 uh I went into uh, GameStop this weekend. Uh, I thought about buying something was locked in a cabinet. I asked a, a customer service rep the price, and he didn't know and referred me to the 12-person deep line at the cash register to get pricing. Wow. Um, I kind of uh, I kind of left. Yeah, there you go. Uh, Nick, uh, hey, Uncle Bruce, I wrote an HPQ uh, June 28 for 4 bucks. It's now worth 2 bucks. Uh, I'm prepared to continue to cross my arms and collect time premium, but should I consider rolling into a closer expiration? Nick, you might want to do that. Uh, that's kind of what we were just talking about here with Brian and his unique situation on GameStop. Your stock is twenty seven. It's twenty six thirty seven. You got twenty eights, um, and I definitely would like to get you much closer in time than June. Yeah, I, I would recommend that. Check your option chains for uh, February and March contracts, and just see if you can find a, a February or a March contract that might be a lower strike price. That can get you two, two and a half, two seventy-five, three bucks. See what you can do. Even if you're moving up a month or two months or three months, you know, anything from down to May or April or, or, or March, something like that, check it out. E Lisa, Uncle Bruce, I have two more poor man cover calls ready on 
GameStop. Do I write now or wait for a pop in the morning to write covered calls? I have others at 2250, April 23. Do I write two more for the same one? Uh, I would not wait. Uh, I would definitely get out there and uh, uh, do a write. Um, I'd definitely bring in cash immediately on this call, make it work immediately for you. Because the worst case scenario for you, and this is hardly a problem, you'll do a rollover if you have to. If the stock wants to pop, it better pop a lot, like not a buck or two. It better move four or five bucks. Then you'll do a rollover. But right now, you're not going to worry about that. Yeah, take a look at maybe uh, March or April contracts. Uh, you've got an April uh, 2250 out there. You may want to join those. On the other hand, you might decide to write uh, a March uh, 22 and bring in 340 um <clears throat> that's a good uh, bunch of dough 340 dollars for for uh, two more of these uh, 680 bucks against the cost of these two and that's uh that's march if you go april uh, and you said 2250 uh we're showing 345 385 so 375 maybe 380 you might be able to get for those uh that's cool but if you can go one month shorter for almost as much money you may want to make the move to the other one instead uh, Amy, I uh, just looked it up. It's a $30 item. GameStop would probably sell a lot more $30 items if it wasn't locked up in a cabinet. Isn't that amazing? Uh, DH, I'm number 62, Bruce. Thank you. Amy, their merchandising is just really bad. They must have, if they're locking up $30 items, think about it. They're locking up $30 items. Can you imagine the theft that they're dealing with? It's got to be epidemic. And who are their prime customers think about the demographic of the gamestop client overall it's male young male young male with not a lot of money unless mummy's giving it to them or they got a part-time job i mean let's get real here this is not a fragrance sephora business uh these are young males who don't have a lot of dough and they're stealing $30 stuff, walking out the door with it. And if you've got 12 people up in the lineup, you got one schmuck walking the floor who's overwhelmed and doesn't give a crap about their job. Let's get real. How can anyone at GameStop give a crap about working for this company if there's only two in a store, 12 people in line, and mayhem everywhere else? How much fun are they having over there? And so customer service and uh, everything else, my goodness, you got you to ask yourself, what what's in it for these guys? Brian, a Amy, if it's locked in the cabinet, it's probably because it is very popular for theft, although why don't they have prices on everything? I agree. Uh, you'd think, but it's a bulky item, a micro arcade machine, not easy to steal. Uh, Splayer, I think it would be out today earlier, so I have a relaxed ending and a good night. You take care of their spare. Brian, Walmart locks up razors and razor blades. Exactly. Um, Brian, probably $25 for five blades. Yeah, yeah, it's expensive stuff. Desperate times call for desperate measures. And there are a lot of people who are going to shopping malls specifically to try to steal stuff. That's what they want to do. That's what they're trying to do is to walk out stores walk out of stores with merchandise. And this is what retailers fear the most. Shrinkage, uh, inventory shrinkage, and you don't notice it until inventory time. And then it's way, way too late. Uh, that is the issue. Absolutely. No question about it. Unbelievable. Anyway, here we are. Uh, we are now coming into 35, 36 minutes to go. <coughs> The Dow at the moment is down uh, 299 points. Um, we've got, um, let's take a look here at the rest of this market right now. We got a $20 market right now, approximately on GameStop. We got uh, we got S&P down 49, NASDAQ down 193. So we're, we're not going anywhere. And then uh, uh, we've got uh, Moderna down five. We've got ATIP at 31 cents. Tesla at 149.76, SoFi 442.3 cents, down 21 cents. Apple uh, down 278 to 131.73 here. So we, we got red all over the place with our big uh, cap stocks. Uh, very little green here, Boeing up 129. Um, JP Morgan up 23 cents. I mean, we don't have any winners here, really. We don't have winners. It's losers today. 
One of the greenies, though, is a one half of a cent increase on ATIP at thirty-one dollars, thirty-one cents even. How about that? Oh, man, wouldn't it be nice with thirty-one dollars? How rich would you guys be if your ATIP was trading at thirty-one dollars today? I think Nick would be out of control. I, I don't know if we'd be able to talk to Nick. We'd probably have to talk to a secretary of Nick's to find out how he's doing today because he'd be so rich, you know. You got to love it. I love Nick. Uh, way to go, you guys. Uh, keep it going. Keep it going. Um, let's go. R Walmart locks up Red Bull. Oh, my God. Touch grass, all the wire, and Romex is locked behind Plexi Home Depot now. Crazy. Um, JR says, Razor's baby formula, uh, over-the-counter drugs. A lot of stuff is locked up. Around here, people sell that stuff at the swap meets and flea markets, stuff that's obviously stolen and now it's for sale. Isn't it incredible? Um, this is the this is a sign of a lowered standard of living. When your standard of living is dropping, there are certain things you look for in society and societal behavior, maybe is the word I was trying to search for, that tips you off that we're running into an issue with uh, a lowered standard of living. And when Walmart and GameStop and uh, Best Buy and uh, Walgreens and, uh, you know, all of your pharmaceutical outfits, when they start locking up merchandise, uh, you, are, you are in a zone, in an area where there is distress. And uh, this is one step away from the real retailer walking out. The retailer can only tolerate so much in shrinkage. They will make certain moves to combat it. And then after that, if they breach, it still is breached, they will shut the store and they will just literally move the store to a much higher demographic neighborhood and say goodbye to a bunch of their clients. I mean, this is this is it. And this is why, can you now, now you can understand why is it that GameStop would rather sell you merchandise online than in a store? <clears throat> Think about that store with 12 kids lined up or 12 people lined up to buy stuff. You got these two, at least two kids working in there, maybe one or two more. They're up to here in stress. They got, they got you know, questions everywhere, upset people everywhere. They're impatient. Um, they're not getting any bonus money. They're just, you know, looking to finish their shift and get the hell out of there. Uh, whereas in the warehouse, you know, these orders come in on the internet. And if you can source the goods in the warehouse using robots to not only receive it, but then also to, to re reship it out. You don't have shrinkage over there. You don't have a bunch of people lined up walking around trying to steal stuff. It's a secure facility. Uh, the cash is all electronic. No, no, no uh, declined credit cards, stolen credit card. You know, very little of that. Um, everything is shipped uh, through through handlers. I mean, yeah, you can see why stores want to go that direction. Alberto, uncle, I'm here. You can begin now. Good afternoon, Bagel Familia. Thank you, my friend. Thank you for joining me today. Tesla, 149.59. Nick Dumorier on HPQ. The only $31 uh, call, um, the only 30, no, the only three-ish dollar calls are February and March 25s. Is it worth dropping my strike from 28 to 25 to move from June to March? There's the question. Okay, now I see what's going on here. Ah, this is an interesting comment. Well, all right. Um, uh, it's a yes and no answer, I think, isn't it? What do we got here now? 2642 is where the stock is at. Um, we don't have a catastrophic drop on our hands at the moment. Um, there's no rush to get this trade done for the moment. Um, let me see if I can get my get my uh, my phone to work here. Here we are. I mean, in the last week. Where has the stock been? Um, the 13th and 14th last week, we we're sitting around 28.80, almost $29, and now we're at 26 and a half, two and a half dollars lower, right? So you've definitely got yourself a nice move downward. You could theoretically write 25s, but you're now writing in the money calls. Um, you could also just do nothing and just allow this two dollar contract if that's what it is now. I think so. You said it's. Around two bucks, give it, give you another dollar. 
just to give you another dollar from time depreciation or 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 continued shrinkage um and then see what you want to do from there i mean yeah uh three-ish dollar calls i mean yeah, yeah okay um yeah i would rather you get uh nick there we are there's nick's comment 28 he had a 28 dollar here's his first comment 28 dollar hbq he got four for it that's a great right um it's now worth two i'm prepared to continue customer to collect time should i consider rolling so there's you know there is the question and um this this i love this position you're in nick because you're in a control spot. I don't think you should write 25s. Nope, 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 nope. Um, if you can't get a, 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 a three and a half, four dollar premium on anything right now, I think you wait. Let your contract go down to a buck, buck and a half, then look for a three dollar premium at that point. Let's see if more calls get created. Further calls get, you know, rolled out by the specialist and let's see what the stock does in the meantime um maybe she'll give up some more ground first thing to know is that even if the shares climb back up a bit to 27 dollars 27 and a half dollars your calls aren't going back to four not at all so you're in a good spot here um these calls are working for you um the only thing i can think of is if you need the money in other words if you could take additional cash Use it now to buy deep in the money calls on HBQ, say these $20 deep in the money calls that are way out there, then it's worth your while because you're adding additional calls to your arsenal at these cheap prices because the stock is down to $26.40. But uh, I wouldn't worry other than that. Um, so another, another few days, another week, and let's see what happens. Might be the way to go. Okay. Touchgrass says... Desperation. Alex, evening all, number 68 on the thumbs up meter. Thank you very much. Uh, I bought 200 more ATIP and another thousand, another 100 SoFi earlier today. Right on. J Boy bought another 900 ATIP, 300 SoFi. Right there with you, Alex. Uh, Zach, uh, number 72 thumbs ups. Thank you. <coughs> Driving by here on the thumbs up meter. See you all on the replay. Thank you, Zach. Uh, Ed Hawkins uh, bought back my SoFi covered calls that I wrote last week for a thousand dollar profit. It popped more after I wrote, but I used the uh, Uncle Bruce Zen to keep my arms folded and I waited it out. There you go. Said in the shop where I was working, there were girls stealing five to ten euro Minecraft items. Oh my gosh, Brian! I bought more. I bought more GameStop shares, says Brian, under $80 pre-split. This is when Cohen bought 100,000 more shares. Alex, J-Boy, yes, sir, Muna Moo, thumbs up for Bruce. Robert, I am number 75, Bruce, on your thumbs up meter. Thank you, Robert. Alex, Uncle Bruce, I was thinking earlier that at, at that the one time I'm still lost with writing is when I've just bought back. There are so many possible strike and expiry combinations. Sounds like others are unsure, too. Could it be a good topic to cover in a class? Uh, always a good topic to cover in a class. What calls to write next and why? Very, very good topic. And, and that's something I'll have to look into doing. Yeah. Nick uh, DeMaurier probably just crossed my arms on HPQ for the holidays at least. Eh, for now, let it work for you because they're going to depreciate here. Coyote, a class called How to Always Be Writing would be good. Alberto, Alex, after buyback, I always look to exceed the previous premiums. Alberto, Coyote, what's up? All better, I hope. Coyote, Alberto, I'm getting there. Thanks, man. Alberto, happy to hear. Welcome all to the show. We're down 234 on the Dow Jones. Uh, we're off 45 or so on the S&P 500, so, or so it would seem. Uh, we've got right now... Um, let me recap that. 245 on the Dow, 45 on S&P, and 189 drop on NASDAQ. Yeah. NASDAQ down 1.77%. The Dow's only down 0.75. It's not even half. So the Dow should be down over 550 points to catch up to NASDAQ. Hasn't done it. Oil up 132 in Texas at uh, 75.65. Okay. Um, Moderna, 494 to the downside, 188.35. Four. Uh, I got a guy in Pittsburgh I know who's uh, sitting on 180s that he rolled up to uh, last week or so. 
And um, I think he's ahead on that trade quite nicely. Um, I'm not sure by how much, but I'm, I'm pretty sure he's up, he's up on that trade right now. And I'm kind of wondering, uh, will he, in the near future, next few days, will he have an opportunity, if the shares keep pulling back like they are, could he make a move where he buys back his calls and writes um, closer in in time calls to bring in the calendar? Because he, he had to write out going further up. I'm really curious about this. Um, it, it's never a dull moment in our lives. Um, I'm not exactly sure. I'm trying to remember what he got for his calls. It was a good, pretty penny. But um, anyway, they're, they've are they backed off. It looks like they're down about $17 from the last day they traded. I don't know if they traded on Friday or not. The stock's off four. So these calls don't trade every single day, but they, they have backed off uh, significantly. Uh, which is a good thing to see here. Uh, at least I think I think I got the right call. I'm not 100% sure if I'm on the right call. But I, I'll have to talk to my friend over in Pittsburgh about where he's at on this thing. Might be a good idea for my friend in Pittsburgh to send me a private email and just say, hey, here's the one I wrote. Here's what I got for it. What do you think? And uh, I might do some scheming on that. Um, Anyway, the, you know, membership has its privileges. So, you know, let me know what you think. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Um, what else is going on here? Um, Alex is saying, good to see you there, Coyote. Brian, it seems you should be selling a cover call that is higher than what you paid to buy back your original. It seems, it seems you should be selling a cover call that is higher than what you paid to buy back your original. If you can get that closer in... In time, uh, yeah, make more money. Exactly. Yes, of course. That's exactly right. If you if you have uh, you wrote a call, whatever the call is you wrote, and it was a four fifty call, it's now a two dollar call, and you can buy it back and sell. And the next call you're writing might be for two fifty fifty cents more than what you're just paying to buy this one back. On top of everything else, it's maybe a higher strike price contract, and it's closer in in time. That's a triple play. That's a win-win and a win. Um, yeah, and of course, of course, if you if you have written a call for four fifty, and you're buying it at eighty six cents on a steak bid, right? I mean, you are scoring a huge hit. The next one you write is four fifty in dollars. Now you are talking. Now you're talking about making a living doing this. Exactly. Alex, Alberto, so much to talk about here. Larry, greetings, everybody. I'm number 87. Alberto, is Alex here? Oh, man. Uh, John, looking to buy long calls on uh, HP. My target stock My target stock is $25. Should I wait or pick them up here around $26.40? What, what, what are your thoughts? Um, whatever price you pick them up on, um, looking to buy long calls. You're, you're actually thinking about buying call options to go long on call option. I can't help you there because you're, you're, uh, you're not, uh, you're not thinking about writing. Uh, 20 hours. I pick them up here around 26. Yeah. I pff, no idea. My friend, you're guessing now that you're asking me to guess for you. I'm not going to happen. Hey, Larry, uh, Jr. says, Hey, Larry, um, Alberto, Alberto, uh, Brian. Yes. Push it out until the premium exceeds. Uh, the strike, yes, push him up right on. <clears throat> Interesting stuff. HIP sitting at 31 cents, up a half a penny. The Dow Jones is still down 232 points on the day. There you go. Uh, and we've got, uh, we've got, there we go. Booyah. <coughs> We got the Dow down 233, S&P down 46, NASDAQ down 190. There you have it. Uh, um, no deep in the money calls to write against, says John Gill. Alberto, um, Alex, absolutely. I misread your message, Alberto, saying um, this is the channel for real. No BS market talk in plain English. Uh, JR, John Gill, if you, are, if you are buying a call to write against, Use the 9010 calculator in Discord to make that decision. There you go. Right on. Um, yeah, for sure. 
The Apple shares 131.44 down 309. They're not getting any better here. So far, 440 down 24. No improvement coming. We're down to 20 minutes in the day here. Tesla 149.19 slipping a little further. Uh, GameStop 1994 down 86 cents. Moderna down 443. The Dow down 251. Uh, that is what is happening right now. Um, Brian says, Uncle Bruce, I'm going to email you for the Discord link. Thank you, my friend. Yes, please do, and I'll I'll send you along to where you can go to that. Do that. Um, and Alberto, Alex, got it. Had to grab my readers. Laugh out loud. <laughs> We're down 262 on the Dow. A little further slippage here with now uh, about 19 minutes left in our session today. 1992 on GameStop. The low of the day on GameStop has been, uh, I think it's $19.59. 1959 is the low on, uh, on uh, GameStop. 275-point drop on the Dow. Another little chink lower. Tiny little bit further. Um chink in the chain to a 49 point drop on s p 1.29 percent nasdaq down 207 points 1.94 percent more than double the dow's drop dow now has to come off almost 600 points to equal the low day the low performance of nasdaq that is the deal there at the moment okay um let's see um John Gill, I'd be looking to buy 18. So John is thinking about buying $18 HPQs, the deep in the money HPQs, to then write against it. Yes, now I see what you're saying. Uh, yeah, I mean, if you're going to write against it, you might look at 25s maybe, 26s, um, and see if you can bring him some dollars. Uh, we were just talking about that a minute ago with others. Alberto, Alex got it, had to grab my readers. GameStop below 20. Wow, yes, indeed. Wow, it is. But it's not a lot below 20. It's just kind of there. And it's not like, oh, it's a shock to the system. And it's not a shock to the system. People are used to these moves. But it is under $80 pre-split now. Interesting to note on GameStop. Okay, uh, Tesla 149.50, uh, trying to get closer to this 150 level, uh, 440 on SoFi, 131.56 on, on your Apple shares. We're now down to uh, 18 minutes in our session, and we're done for this uh, first day of the week with a down day for sure. Uh, uh, interesting. Hmm. Okay, um, we'll follow a lot of things here. Um, lots to watch. Amazon down 323 to 8463. We got uh, Home Depot down 652. Cisco's off 53 cents. Netflix down 376. Pfizer down 19 cents. IBM off two dollars. Microsoft 560 and 566 drop for Microsoft. Vanek down four dollars. Adobe off 1171 to 326. I know some people that have written 350s on these. I think they're smiling today. Uh, Golden Sachs uh, down 218 a share. Google down 191. Boeing is only up 120 today. Meta down to 114.52 down 491. I know a guy has some i think 111s or 13s written i can't quite remember but he's getting uh, happier i think uh me uh down 20 cents to 240 rocket lab 385 down 21 cents matterport 29 cent drop at 251 smart rent down seven cents spire down a nickel and sextera down 17. i was talking to somebody yesterday about uh smart rent and matterport um and how uh, how um the individual that i was talking to is involved in the real estate business and um uh, uh was it was saying with we we were on the same page with both of these companies they're going to be monsters they're going to be hugely successful very profitable they're going to be like utilities these two companies are going to become like utility companies um you will not be able to attract a customer to your resort unless you matterport it 
you won't be able to get um, – you're going to have a tough time if you're a cruise line and your competitors are mataporting their ships and you're not. You're going to have a tough time selling your ship's uh, deal. If, you, uh, if you're building a new subdivision and right now it's all on the drawing board, um, you got the land, you know, just at the edge of town, you're going to put up 150 houses. All you have out in the sticks out there are – big cardboard signs that you know name the name of the development and who the developer is and then you put one of those little square things with a jiggly thing on there that you can use your phone for that is your Matterport entry into the subdivision and I I cannot see a, a builder any home builder in North America around the world getting very far unless they Matterport their properties future properties or existing any realtor right now that sells a house an existing house you got a matter it. if you have you want to have a shot at getting a, a, a sale in this market now where there are no buyers you better be matterporting you've got to give the buyer something different than anybody else don't don't be thinking a little click picture of the living room is going to cut it matterport the house uh smart rent oh my god we were talking about that about how how incredibly useful smart rent has become for uh property managers i mean jennifer was a property manager auntie jen was was helping to um, manage a 36 uh, story tall office tower in downtown calgary one of the nicest towers in the city and the amount of of logistical work that was going on 24 7 with this project with this building was just unbelievable i mean most people their their idea of an office tower the only the only uh, the only uh, in interaction they have is they go to work monday to friday and go home the buildings are run 24 7 and property managers are monitoring their properties 24 7. so if you're a property manager in charge of like a hotel with 500 rooms 300 of which are occupied 200 of which are not you can change the settings of the 200 rooms that are not occupied to use less energy because no one's in there they don't have to be as heavily air conditioned in the summer they don't have to be as highly heated in the winter uh, there's all kinds of you know energy savings tips you can employ on a unit that's occupied or not with smart rent you're going to key into your uh, reservation system when you were you know hand a key uh, a set of keys to a tenant a weekend uh you know husband and wife staying in a hotel for the weekend you hand them the keys the minute you've done that that room is activated as now an occupied room its air conditioning is set to uh, to come on or its heater is set to come on to adjust for the temperature a more ambient temperature when they get there i mean by the time they get there five minutes later with their bags the air conditioning is on the heat is on whatever is necessary the blinds might be open depending on daytime. They might be partially closed at nighttime. Um, these properties are going to be managed within, you know, one minute of occupancy and of non-occupancy. Um, lights that are left on by mistake by the tenant, don't worry, they'll they'll be they shut off automatically under the smart rent system. We're talking about savings of pennies here and here and here and here times five hundred rooms times 365 days a year, we're talking dollars. We're talking about a utility piece that is absolutely necessary for that property to return its largest possible dollar return to its owners. And uh, um, these two companies are going to be incredibly successful. They're sitting on a mountain of money, these two guys. I think between them, they have three quarters of a billion in cash between the two of them, no debts, growing their clients like crazy. And uh, we were talking about this over the weekend going, you know, the day will come. The day will come when people out there will go, I've never heard of these guys before. Who are these guys? It's going to be investors introduced to Matterport and to uh, Smart Rent that have never heard of them before because they've never heard of this channel. And they're going to be blown away that they're only $25 a share to buy. They're that cheap. Uh, the cash flows of these companies and the earnings they're going to make is going to be phenomenal. And they won't be knocked off their perch because let's say 
uh, interest rates go up a half a point and uh, people don't want to buy uh, cars right now. Uh, or inflation comes out and the, the uh, uh, retail spending goes back. These two companies won't be affected by that. Matterport and SmartRent, they're going to be laughing at the rest of the market out there because Matterport's business never falters. And smart rent, once that is installed in the building, it is in the building forever. Think about your own house, wherever you are around the world. Many of you in North America walk around your house and you tell me, are there places in your bedrooms and living rooms and your kitchens where you have these uh, white colored or dark colored plastic plates in your wall? Uh, either at eye level or or down a foot off the floor, where right beside the power outlet, there's another outlet down there that used to be the cable for your cable TV. Or in the kitchen, you have one of those white little things with that little knob sticking out. That's what where your phone used to plug in. Do you remember those? You used to have a wall phone on your kitchen wall with the twangly cord. Once they're installed. They're never taken out unless you do a renovation of your house. You will then rip everything out of there, but you were talking crazy money. Smart rent is installed into the wall and into the house to monitor everything. You never take it out. It's in there forever. It's a utility now. It's part of the operation of the property. So smart rent and, and, and Matterport with Matterport's imaging software for renovation work, subdivision building, real estate sales, resort promotion, uh, retail store layout and design, uh, where head office sends each branch manager a copy of their store's layout and says, here's what we want your store to look like after Christmas is over. The first week of January, here's what your store should look like now. We're getting ready for Valentine's Day. Then we're getting rather ready for Easter and Mother's Day and everything else. The, the, your store design changes all the time. Who do you think tells them to do that? It's going to come through Matterport now. They're going to get photos. And they can then zip in there and expand it and shrink it and twist it. And they can look at each counter and each display. And like, oh, okay. The chocolate goes here and the bunnies go there and this goes there. That's the future, Marty. It's the future. The flux capacitor has already been invented and people are using it. Yes. Oh, it's fun. It's just so much fun, everybody. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Uh, we got seven minutes to go. Uh, Ed Hawkins says, hey, Uncle Bruce, is this a 90-10 uh, thing here? The $10 GameStop strike, It's they're asking 12 bucks. That's 22 bucks uh, for a $2 premium on a $20 stock. Am I right on this? Okay, so if GameStop is is twenty bucks a share, and you have to pay twelve dollars for the for the contract, it's a ten dollar contract. You're paying a, a two dollar premium over and above the stock. In other words, the book value of your contract is ten dollars. Your time premium is two dollars. That's how you came up with twelve dollars. $10 from $10 to $20, the book value. And then from uh, and then the extra $2 is time premium. That's too expensive. <coughs> it's not in the 10% guideline. <clears throat> not in the 10% guideline. If you pay, uh, uh, if you're paying, uh, uh, if you're paying $12 for that call, you're getting a $10 book, and but you're paying $2 time. And that $2 is more than 10% of the price of the contract. The contract is 12 bucks and you're paying $2 instead of $1.20 max. The time premium should be 120 or less, ideally. Now, I have said to viewers on this channel, because you are trying to buy, and I'm not sure which one you're getting, Ed, if this contract you're talking about, this one right here, if that is a 2025, five GameStop $10 call, not a 2024, but a 2025. I'm cool. I'm cool if you pay $12 for that call. If you get it for 1160, 1170, even better, but you're okay paying a little more. You get an extra year of writing time. Okay. 
even if you write one set of calls a month, that's 12 additional call rights that you're getting your hands on. So for a little extra money, you're okay, but not outrageously more. That's fine too. If this is a 2024, it's too expensive. It's it's too expensive by not a lot, but by about a buck. You really need to get it for about 11, not 12. You make your money when you buy. Sometimes that's how this is, this is how it's done. Uh, JJ, uh, I have a stink bid field on ATIP, 30.56, and it's 30.1 right now. Mirko, Ed Hawkins, it's more like 80%, 20. Uh, uh, Alberto BW, uh, I'm not sure what's going on there. DQ, uh, Stock Markets with Bruce, uh, I was behind on the stream, just sent an email regarding Moderna calls. Okay, cool, cool. Thank you, my friend. I knew you'd catch up with me sooner or later. Uh, Mirko, total price, $12, two of which is premiums is exactly 16.66%. So that's an 83.4 versus a 16.6 instead of a 90.10. You're paying too much. <laughs> Miracle. So $2 premium as a percentage of the cost. Okay, I got it. Thought it was on total cost versus stock price. Got it. Got it. Okay, Alex, uh, I, I just sold all of my GameStop shares and I bought the Jan 25 calls. Went from five rights to eight rights. Now I can, I can now write eight calls at a time instead of five calls at a time. That's what I'm doing. There you go. Uh, Brian, Alex, if GameStop goes to the moon, do, do your call contracts follow you to the moon? They do. Uh, they do indeed. Uh, very good. Okay, uh, we're down 169 on the uh, Dow Jones. A little improvement here with now four minutes to go. Uh, we're still off uh, on the other two indexes from what I can tell you. Let me just double check this. Wait for this uh, to load back up. Here we go. Yeah, we're down 164 on the Dow. Make it 172. We're down 34 on S&P. We're down 158 on NASDAQ. NASDAQ down 1.48%. The Dow's down a half a point. So the Dow is only one-third as bad off as it should be. The Dow should be at 500 negative to equal NASDAQ. So the Dow is not playing ball today. GameStop, 19.90 a share, uh, down 90 cents on the day. Moderna, 189.86. We got ATIP at 30 cents uh, uh, a share. We've got, uh, it's down 0.4 of a penny. It's that late sell-off that seems to come in almost every day. Uh, Tesla, 149.98, trying to hang on to 150. Something tells me it will close above 150. I think there are several billion reasons why Tesla cannot close under 150 tonight. Billions of reasons why the stock cannot close under 150 in the next two minutes. Watch the Tesla share. Uh, so far, 442 down 21. Apple down 199 to 132.50. HPQ is down 15 cents, 26.56, and Amazon down 276 right now. Uh, Home Depot down 606, Costco, Cisco down 38. Uh, we're down 158 on the Dow. HPQ down 15 cents today. All right, uh, Moderna back to 190. 1993 on GameStop and Tesla now 149.98. Uh, we have two minutes to go. And there are billions of reasons why Tesla shares cannot close under 150 a share. Billions of reasons. We're trading now 149.97 as we speak on a volume of 135 million on GameStop. I mean on Tesla. Tesla, 149.92 with a minute to go. All right. DQ is saying to Alex, 60% increase in rights. You're going from five to eight. That's great. Mirko, Ed, uh, like Uncle said, for the January 25s, it's kind of okay. Try to stink bid it. Uh, Alex, DQ, I should be able to add another each month now. I have held off selling, but time to get real and just make money. DQ, Alex, right on. DQ, and right on too. DQ, one minute to trade in the third period. We're down to one minute to go. Tesla, 149.93 last trade um but my system may not be very accurate in uh, <laughs> in this uh 190 149.94 149.89 uh we've got a lot of activity going on on tesla in the last moments here we go 
coming through the last minute of the day, 149.87, uh, 149.91, and we'll just see what the last trades were on the end. Larry Titus has done us all a favor. He has rung the bells to say enough's enough. We're taking a rest here. Uh, thank you, Larry Titus from DQ and uh, TSL Close, 149.87 Tesla. 149.87, 149.91. Uh, we'll see what they uh, what the final adjustments will be <clears throat> on all of this. We're down 163 on uh, the uh, the Dow Jones. Uh, we lost 34 on S and P, 159 on Nasdaq. There was no question; it was a down day today. There was no no if ands or buts. Okay. Uh, okay, puts on France, uh, Tesla, Argentina wins. Oh, wait, that was yesterday. Uh, there you go. There's the day. 30 cent last trade. I'm showing an ATIP, um, down a half a penny. And volume on ATIP, 489,000, all day up until the last 20 minutes. GameStop, 1993, down 87 cents. Moderna, 189.89. Uh, and uh, SoFi, 443. There you go. There, there it is. Another fun, fun day today. Oh, my goodness. Well, congratulations, those of you out there who have been working your rollovers and uh, realignments on your calls, moving into deep in the money calls to be able to write a bunch more and boost your revenue streams. Well done, everyone. I, I think it's fantastic. Um, you're getting paid for, for, um, for your portfolio here. Make an impact, make a difference to your bottom line now. Um, man, I think it's fantastic that um, so many of you on this channel in the last uh, two months have really built up your poor man deep in the money call inventories, and you can really start writing calls now. I love this. I just love it. It's going to make a profound difference to your bottom lines these next two, four, six, ten months. I mean, the amount of cash flow you're going to be enhanced now with it's going to show in in a number of ways so well well done all of you thank you uh let's see um someone loves to hit the atip at the bell to get a negative print now why would someone want to do that oh a shorter trying to get people to keep selling uh brian i think i'm getting a christmas bonus today probably 500 but i'm gonna take it alex uh, same thing happened on friday bw <coughs> i guess the amazing premiums won't come back to gamestop until we start seeing an uptick not only on it, but the rest of the markets. Brian, I think I will buy more GameStop. And then I'll be three quarters of the way to writing another covered call. How about that? Neat, neat, neat. Right on. Uh, well, we'll see how all of this plays out tomorrow. Uh, folks, thank you again for all your support of this channel. We've uh, received today 98 thumbs ups. Uh, not bad at all. Um, I haven't had time to beg for any of these. Thank you uh, for 98 thumbs ups. If you're able to, uh, if any of you out there have a couple lying around and you can throw our way, please hit that thumbs up button and put us over 100. That would be terrific. Uh, there comes number 99. We got the Wayne Gretzky uh, thumbs up. There's 101. So we're into triple digits as we usually are for the afternoon show. Thank you earlier. Uh, any of you out there earlier today who were able to... Uh, uh, help this channel out with the uh, thumbs ups this morning. Uh, we uh, we thank you uh, for again uh, putting us over the top. I, I I'm pretty sure we broke 200 this morning. Uh, it was a bit of a grind there, but I think we got it done. Um, we have 214 thumbs ups came in on the morning show today uh, earlier today. So. Thank you for uh, for uh, that. Uh, uh, 214 thumbs ups uh, came in. 94.7 of 94.7 percent of all indicated thumbs ups were positive. Isn't that great? Um, final hour with trading on on uh, on December 16th. That was Friday. We had 163 thumbs ups. That's 96 and a half percent. We had uh, on December the 16th, the morning show. 233 thumbs ups um and um uh, yeah we we just seem to get these uh, get these numbers every time uh at least 100 in the afternoon and 200 in the morning very high percentage thumbs ups numbers come through for us um it just shows the uh 
it just shows how great you guys are to the channel. I do, I do really appreciate it. All right. All right, guys, there it is. That's our story. Um, another day in paradise. Uh, thank you all. Um, and uh, we'll see what's going on here. Um, what else we got here? Uh, yeah, Brian, DQ. I was just thinking about it, but these GameStop cover calls give me cash now. Matthew, I'm number 110. DQ, Brian, yeah, go with GameStop. Hawkeye says GameStop cost basis. Matthew, next year I'm going to be doing poor man cover calls on GameStop. I can't wait. There you go. Right on. All right, you guys. I will see you guys on this channel tomorrow morning uh for the pre-show then i'll see you at 8 30 then i will see six of you tomorrow at one o'clock right here one o'clock eastern time for the six on one the first ever six on one telecast tomorrow wednesday we have another six on one telecast coming out and we still have two or three spots left for it and then thursday we'll do the third one and we'll see how those work out and get your reviews on them and kind of measure your thoughts on these and did you like them are they worth your while uh, would you like me to do more i'm stoked about the whole darn thing thank you all for being with me today and for saying hi to jen for me we will keep you posted on how we're doing i'll be on my other channel traveling with bruce later tonight seven o'clock eastern and eight o'clock eastern tonight i'll be over there if you're joining me at eight o'clock eastern it's an open show to say hi to me on the TWB. Love to have you there. In the meantime, take care of yourself. Stay healthy. I'll do the best I can. Uh, stay healthy as well. The robot testing is working very, very well. I will see you this this uh, this evening over on TWB here tomorrow morning, first thing in the morning. Have a great night, all. Let's see if we can get richer. Thank you, everybody. Take care, and we'll talk to you later. Goodbye from Palm Desert.